G'day everyone, Tim from vMix here. And in this video, we're going to take a look at using a wireless video transmitter to bring in camera content to your live stream. Now we're going to try and chuck one of these on one of these and then connect it up to one of these. Then we're going to send heat out into the car park with this rig to grab some remote content that we can add to this very live production. Now you might watch TV and wonder, how do they get the video from cameras out on the football field that are hundreds of meters away, all without cables? Well, perhaps you already know how they do this and you'd like to add that video feed into vMix. If you've contemplated either of those things, I'm gonna do my best to explain them over the course of this video. So feel free to use the chapters if you wanna jump ahead to a particular spot. Now, when creating live content, sometimes it's just impossible to use a camera with a cable. Now, as funny as it would be to watch, Having four camera operators running around a football field with thousands of meters of cabling all over the place would be an absolute nightmare. That's where wireless video transmission comes into play. You can have roving camera operators on the field capturing action and interviews without the cables getting in the way of other players, band members, hot dog salesmen, dancing teams, and of course, mascots. Now at the height of our Friday afternoon petrol price live stream last year on our Facebook page, I thought it would be a great addition to have a remote camera to watch Heath perform his live drone stunts. Now, unfortunately, we never got around to using it, so that's what we're going to be trying out today. We purchased the most affordable wireless video kit that we could find, and it's the Holy Land Mars 400S Pro. Now, this is not a product review, so make sure that if you're in the market for this type of thing to do your own research, and check out YouTube reviews from people that actually know what they're talking about. Now, I'm positive that there are also people on Twitter, Reddit, Facebook groups, and our forums that will also give you their opinion on their favorite wireless options too. All right, so how does this work? The plan is to connect up my camera to the transmitter and then send the video wirelessly to the receiver, which we can then input into our vMix production. So once you've got your wireless video transmitter kit, what you'll need to do is firstly set it all up. Now these are all pretty straightforward. This one was fairly automatic where it would select the right channel and then you can go ahead and start setting up the quality of the video. So usually you can choose between speed or quality. We've selected quality today. So once you've got them paired and set up, then you can go ahead and add your camera. So you wanna plug your camera into the transmitter. Now you will need to work out a way to power your camera and transmitter if they're both wireless, like if they're not plugged into something. So the transmitters have the option for a battery pack, DC power, or USB power. Now we've gone the dodgy route and hooked up a USB power bank to it because I don't actually have any of the batteries that this supports. So that's what we've decided to do today. Now these devices support HDMI or SDI. So I'm just going to connect up this camera to this transmitter via SDI. Now on the other end, we need to connect up the receiver to our production. Now you could just plug it into your SDI or HDMI capture card like this. However, as I'm nowhere near Heath, I'm going to plug it into a HDMI to NDI converter so I can see it on the network. So these transmitters work best when they have direct line of sight. Now, unfortunately, I'm currently in a building that has three walls between me and the outside world. So I won't be able to receive the video in here to, in order to plug it into this PC here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the receiver on the window and then I'm going to connect up the NDI converter and plug it into the nearest network port so I can see it in the studio. All right, so let's send heat out into the car park and try all of this out. Okay, so I think we've got it all set up correctly. Heath is now venturing out into the car park. As you can see, I have the window cam here set up. I'm gonna wait for him to let me know that he's good to go, and then I can add it as an NDI source into our production. So hopefully he arrives at some point. Uh, so this is coming from an NDI camera that we had pointing out the window that we use for our petrol price Friday. And now we're just waiting for him to rock up. <music> he may have gotten lost. Hey, oh, there he is. All right, cool. We've got a thumbs up from him. So now I'm going to go to add input and just add it as an NDI source. Let's go ahead and grab the Holy Land, which is connected to the bird dog. Click okay. And uh, let's see if that's come in. Hey, there we go. He's now live out on the field recording the petrol prices 
like so. So look, there we go, zoomed in, not bad at all. Very cool. All right, so there we go, a successful remote camera in our vMix production. Now, some quick things to consider when using wireless transmission. Firstly, you do run the risk of interference, so we would only recommend using it if you really needed to. Like, if you have the option to run a cable, then, you know, running a cable is probably going to be better than doing wireless transmission, but if you have to, make sure that you follow the three rules of live streaming to test, test, and test again, and do your best to test in a real-world situation where you can see how it's going to perform with interference from other people or other devices in use where you're doing your production. For example, if you're at a stadium or something, you're gonna have thousands of people using mobile phones, you've got different radio frequencies flying around, so you wanna make sure that everything is going to be as stable as possible for your wireless transmission. Now secondly, wireless transmission will add a bit of latency or delay to the video feed, so you'll need to factor that in when using wireless video with your other cameras that might be connected via cables. Now some of them talk about different types of latency, like lower latency than others, so it's up to you to test that out and see how it all works. So there are plenty of different transmitters on the market, and they will offer different options in regards to quality, latency, the distance that they can cover, and different features and that kind of thing as well. Now they are expensive though, so definitely do your research when it comes to purchasing them. Do you use wireless video in your productions? If so, what sort of content are you filming and what equipment do you use for that? And for those that are new to live production that might be watching this video, drop a comment and let them know on a scale of one to 10 how much cooler your productions are with live video transmission via wireless. So if you would like to create awesome video productions with or without wireless video, feel free to check out vMix. If you head to vmix.com, you'll find a free 60-day trial of vMix Pro, no watermarks. You'll also find suggested computer builds, compatible equipment, and our support page, where you can send us an email if you have any support questions, or just want to know what Heath's favorite sandwich topping is. Thanks for watching, and we'll stream you later.